Now swimming is a very challenging sport. It requires great technique, strength, endurance, and let's not forget mental capacity to be able to swim up and down all day long. So whilst we can all agree it's a very hard sport, there are some problems only a swimmer will understand. And here are some of them. Swimmers are secretly experts at mental maths. Imagine having to do a set of 20 lots of 100 of a turnaround time of 1 minute 40. Not only will you have to keep an eye on the clock to see how fast you've done each rep, you also need to be working out how long you've got until you need to go for that next rep. Also counting the 20 lots of 100, and not to mention actually simply doing the 20 lots of 100. Then it gets even more complicated when we start doing longer reps changing the turnaround time, maybe even changing the distances, all within one set. Swimmers really are mathematical geniuses, and there's no wonder Archimedes made his greatest discovery in the bath. Tumble turning or flip turning is a skill that swimmers are rather proud of. Nothing identifies a seasoned or a swimmer specialist better than a beautifully executed flip turn into a lovely dolphin kick off. But it doesn't always go perfectly or quite to plan. Perhaps you're on holiday, you're on a training camp, you're just training in a different pool. Whatever your excuse, nothing's more embarrassing than going in for that flip turn and having nothing to push off of and actually just floating in a rather embarrassing pencil shape off the wall. Swimming caps. I mean, who else would really want to put a super tight rubber thing onto their head. Not only do they look ridiculous, they also have a habit of slipping off or breaking just at the wrong moment. I mean, it's all in the name of speed, I guess, and perhaps for keeping our heads warm at times, but there's no getting away from quite how strange they look. Also, what's with the face we pull when we're putting our goggles and our hats on? Getting up at 5 a.m. or whatever ridiculous hour to go for a swim is bad enough. You're going to look tired after whatever, but those bags under your eyes are not going to be helped by the big red goggle marks around your eyes. Turning up to school or to work, looking like you've had some fun with some face paints is never a good look. If you're swimming fairly infrequently, then you'll likely have plenty of time to dry your kit out between sessions. But if you're swimming most days or every day or twice a day, then this is very much a problem, having wet kit. You finish a swim, you chuck your kit into your bag, off you go to work or to school, and that kit just sits in your bag, tormenting you all day long, knowing full well you need to get it out and dry it out. But perhaps you even forget, and your next swim is in that wet kit. And who'd have thought your swimming equipment that you inevitably have to carry too can also absorb so much water and then has a habit of just dribbling down your back as you walk out of the swimming pool. Nothing makes you hungry like swimming. It's no wonder that Michael Phelps was renowned for having a huge daily calorie intake. But not only does swimming make you hungry, it's also really challenging getting the time of your eating right around swimming. Eat too soon to swim and you end up feeling rather sick and horrible. But equally, don't eat enough before a swim and you end up running out of energy mid-swim. And it's not like you can just stop for a coffee and cake like you might on the bike. But that being said, there is nothing better than finishing a swim and tucking into a good breakfast or just raiding the fridge knowing full well that you've earned it. Now this is a rather strange one, but we're used to recognizing our friends from their face, the clothes they wear, etc, etc. But when it comes to our swimming buddies, it's completely different. It's amazing how different people can look when they're fully clothed, not wearing a swimming hat or goggles. So much so, you could end up walking straight past someone who you spend two hours a day within a swimming pool and not even recognize them. It's one thing having to focus hard on your technique, it's another thing having to focus on holding a hard pace. But imagine having to do both of them with foggy goggles. It's near impossible. Yep, struggling to see where you're going, bumping into the lane rope, or perhaps even not being able to see the clock at the end of the pool is enough to make even the sanest of swimmers crack. 
And let's not even start on leaking goggles, or perhaps worse, both at once. Now this phrase is something you only ever hear a swimmer saying, land training. And it's actually quite odd when I think about it, and you may have had people ask you what it is in the past. Essentially, is when a swimmer goes to the gym, does some cardio, does some running, on land and not in the water. Well, how many of these problems have you faced in your time? Perhaps you're a seasoned swimmer and you've experienced all of them. Or maybe you've only just got into swimming and you're not sure about this world that you've just let yourselves into. Drop them in the comments section below. Let us know. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up and give this video a like. If you'd like to see more from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you're notified when all of our other videos come out. If you'd like to see some more videos from us, we've got some unwritten rules for triathlon. You can see that by clicking just down here. And if you'd like to see 10 ways you know you're a triathlete, you can see that by clicking just down here.